Today we're teaching you how to not be an idiot while boondocking. Don't be an idiot. Don't be idiots. I have a feeling we're gonna need gloves for this one. We're Joseph and Kaylin, and we travel full time in an almost 20 year old fifth wheel along with our rescue pup Trinity and rabbit Cody. We've saved $15,000 through work camping so we can take our rig up to Alaska this summer and explore the last frontier. We're slowly making our way north and this week we head to Southeast Utah where stunning red rocks dot the landscape. 15 miles an hour, dirt road, this will be fun. And while we were there, Trinity decided that she needed to add to our never ending list of RV projects. Trinity, we have to have a talk. We have a change of plans today, or should I say change of states, because we are going not in a completely different direction because we're trying to slowly make our way north towards Alaska, but we were headed to Colorado, and I thought that maybe there were not mountains in Southern Colorado, but apparently our boondocking spot is at 8,000 feet elevation, and you know, We've talked about in the last video that elevation matters so much when it comes to weather and it was gonna be like a high of 30 degrees. So we're pivoting and now we're going to Southeast Utah. I have actually told you about three different times why I do the rubber bands, but Joseph always cuts it. So let's see if he leaves this one in, but these cabinets still like they if you hit a rut just right or if you go over a bridge and it bounces just right they will fly open i have lost a pie plate why i even had a pie plate in rv i don't know i don't make pie i'm always curious what people's rvs look like when the slides are completely in so you can see we do have a nice wide footpath this is just the narrowest part but not too bad, very doable. That doesn't bother her at all. You don't care about that dog? Thank you for cleaning the windshield <laughs> and windows. I was gonna say, <laughs> I want y'all to know that uh, windshield and window cleaning was not on the departure list until y'all came along for the ride. Then Kaylin was like, nobody wants to stare through our dirty windows. I'm doing an impression. Well, you suck at impressions. <laughs> now they just have to stare through our little cracks that we have, see right there? Which I don't think we should get fixed before Alaska because people say they lose windshields at Alaska. No, we're gonna get it fixed before Alaska because it's Why? completely free. But if our windshield breaks, isn't that like pointless? Then it's free again to get fixed the second time. Why is time. it free? Because we have glass coverage. We do? Yeah. Through our insurance? So it's a Florida thing, but if okay. you're a Florida resident, like glass coverage is part of your insurance policy. <laughs> so I did not know that. I guess because maybe hurricanes throw projectiles around? I don't know, but I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna take it to Safe Light. Yeah. And they'll either fix the chip or they will uh, replace it. We only got like a month and a half before we go over the border. And the problem is we're always so remote. It's hard to find like yeah. a safe light, but we'll see. We really have been so remote and Trinity needs to get spayed and I need a haircut. And it's just like, it's hard to find those places when you're not near or outside an actual town or city. So we just have back jacks hook up and then we're out of here that's it sweet what time is it 7 39 we're not doing bad our goal we was... wanted to get out of here by eight was that your goal yeah eight. goal was eight okay i think we're gonna meet our goal this is happening in the next video <laughs> this is happening i refuse to cross the canadian border with a two-sided rv and if you're new here and have no idea what I'm talking about, why am I showing you the side of my RV? Make sure you watch this video where we tackle the other side, which looks really good. I'll show it to you quick, but that video will show you how we did it. Did you just say you took care of someone else's trash? I did. That is one of the things we're gonna be talking about today as we talk about boondocking etiquette, or should I say respect. Have fun at the landfill. Ready to do this thing? I am ready to do this thing. We gotta get through that. It is that dip in the road first though. 758. <gasps> Yay! Look at us. Leaving on time.
It is no secret that we absolutely love boondocking. That's why we've spent the last two videos just explaining what it is and where we find the great sites. But there's a problem. There's a problem that's happening with boondocking sites and it's not just a future problem, it's a now problem. And it can be explained in one word, idiots. Idiots, <laughs> don't be idiots. Boondocking sites are getting shut down because of idiots. We've seen boondocking spots that used to be free now costing money. Mm -hmm. We've seen some boondocking spots that we've actually enjoyed get yeah, shut down. Yeah, we stayed at some outside Sedona. So there was a forest road that you could stay and like people were just like scattered all over. And because people were just leaving human waste and excessive trash and destroying the resources by camping in spots that like weren't designated, now they're basically all in parking lots where you're just like camping right next to your neighbors so that they can keep track of people. And it's really frustrating. It's, it it's really frustrating to see beautiful spots get taken away. And, and sometimes I think, sometimes I think some of these agencies are overprotective of, of some areas and they're shutting them down for, for bad reasons. But then in other cases, they're shutting them down for very good reasons. There's a place in Oregon in 2020 that got shut down because they had piles of human waste building up. Dare I say, Poop. It's completely understandable when a department, whether it be BLM or the Forest Service, is just like had enough and shuts it down. So really today we kind of want to go over like nine etiquette rules where if you're going to boondock, please follow these nine rules because not only will it help keep places from getting shut down, but it also just helps you like get along with your neighbors and get along with the people around you. I've got a Whitney Houston song in the back of my mind, but it's all about respect. I don't know if I can play the song because copyright, but R-E-S-B-E-C-T. That's as far as I'm going. Wow. <laughs> so the first way to not be an idiot is obey the stay limits set forth by whatever agency it is. Most BLM land or forest land is gonna be 14 days. The place we just stayed at, Joe Skeen in New Mexico, is actually seven days. I'm assuming that's because there's so few spaces they wanna be able to turn people through. I will make a quick caveat to this, and that is if you get permission from a ranger or from an official there to stay a little longer, that could be okay. We actually had an issue in West Virginia where our truck broke down and it's a diesel, it was gonna take forever to fix. And there were some rangers there and I told them, I was like, hey, you know, we're gonna be here for a little bit longer than 14 days, is that a problem? I explained the truck situation, they're completely fine with it, they didn't have a problem with it. But I wouldn't do that without talking to someone first so that if somebody comes in and questions, you can say, hey, I talked to so-and-so and they gave me permission to be here a little bit longer. The stay limits are in place just to be able to keep people from spending like forever on the land and it becoming a homeless camp and also the public land is for all of us like it's for us to use and if you are there longer than you should be you're not leaving a space for someone else to come and enjoy that land too our final destination isn't our only change of plans no. today uh, we were originally going to go to Four Corners on our way. Yeah, it'd be super touristy, be at four places at once. And then we met a really nice guy. Hey, Jay. Named Jay. <laughs> Hi, Jay, if you're watching this at the Sandstone Bluffs while we were taking sunset photos last night. And he told us about this new place that we have never, ever heard of. And it was kind of on the way. It's called the Bisty Badlands. And yeah, it's a little bit like three, four miles out of the way. Although I'm suddenly not sure of the road we're about to be I taking. Know. I don't know if we should be taking the RV on this. Look at this. It's starting to get gravelly. This is just preparing us for Alaska. We've got two miles. So far, so good. I think, I think we'll be okay. But have you guys ever heard of this place? It's, Let us know in the comments because it was like we were looking at pictures and astounded at what was here. Yeah, it's in New Mexico. We are just going to barely scratch the surface of it mm -hmm. today because we only have a little bit of time. But there are so many hiking trails, so many yeah. cool things to see. And we'll take you along. Ready to explore? Ready to explore. We didn't see that no dogs were allowed or not dogs were not. We, I think it's okay to take a dog. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my words. Come on. Can you 
hop it? Nope. Are you going to go under? Are you going to hop it? What are we going to do here? I wouldn't go that way. Trinity, you're really Trinity. making this a lot more Come difficult on. than it needs to be. You can jump this. Come on, let's go. Jump. Yay. Oh, okay. We're doing under. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on. Look at this. There you go. There you go. We looked online before we came and there's a lot of different like named formations. They have the chocolate hoodoos. There's some alien hatched eggs. There's a, there's just a whole bunch of different formations that you can get to, but there's no like specified trail that gets you to anything specific. So you're kind of on your own trying to like work your way through here. Where are we going, Trin? Where are we going? You're going in circles. This way? Which way? This way. It's just so cool to have this maze. And the thing is when we were driving, like there were some mesas and buttes and things, but then it got really flat and you can't even see this from the road, but then you get back here and it's like literally a whole different world. I am amazed by how many cool things are in the United States. Did you get Tr stuck? Trinity's gone through and she's waiting for me. What? She's like, why are you not coming? <laughs> Oh my word. Ah. Oh my oh, goodness. She's trying. Whoa, she did it. Whoa, Trinity. I didn't realize there was petrified wood here, but that definitely there's, looks like yeah, it. Yeah, there's petrified, there's like, I don't know if they call it the petrified forest. There's a whole section up there that's petrified wood, but this is, that's for sure. That's cool. All right. You ready, Trinity? I think we should probably get back on the road. I think so. But this was a really fun stop. Come on, Trinity. Highly recommend if you're ever in the Northwest Mexico area, Fisty Badlands. And I'm pretty it's sure Trinity fun. gives it a five out of five. Oh, she, I think this has been her favorite place we've been so far. All right, we are back in business. If you do come down that two to three mile dirt road with your RV and it's uh, 30 feet like ours, just know that the parking situation is a little tight. We're able to do it because there's not a ton of cars here. But if there were more cars here, it might have been a little bit more of a challenge. Look at those dust storms. Yeah, this dust keeps getting worse. We got tumbleweeds going everywhere. Oh, he's got a tumbleweed on the front of his car. Oh, I didn't even see it. <laughs> oh my word. Oh, look at the storm right I there. Know. I know, that's what I've been looking at. I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not. But. Oh, sorry, we didn't have time for mics. We just wanted to catch it. I got 9% grade and I got crosswinds. <laughs> I'm just having a blast over here. All right, we got to find the dump station here. RV dump and water back at the back of the building. Okay. I saw a sign. Do I want to go? I think you want to go, yeah, like pull in this way and go, and go all the way around. Can I? this one free? It is free. Nice. Thankfully, this is our last stop of the day. All right, so the second way to not be an idiot when you're boondocking is um, don't dump your black tanks, like ever, on the ground. Like, that's disgusting, that's gross, don't do it. It's illegal. You could have led with that. There's just so many reasons not to do it. But there are some exceptions when it comes to gray tanks. Um, BLM, lands that are designated, I believe it's public lands, you are usually allowed to dump your gray tanks. I like to follow a couple rules of thumb though. If there is any water source, like a stream or a lake within a hundred feet, I even like to go like a hundred yards, I'm not gonna dump my gray tanks there just cause I don't want my gray water getting into those streams. Another thing I do is I try to get the gray water away from the RV. So I'll use my macerator and hose just to push the gray water like as far away from the RV into a place that people aren't parking, people aren't setting up campfires and that sort of thing. And if you're not familiar with what gray tanks are, gray tanks are anything that are coming from your sinks and your showers, whereas your black tank is, well, everything that comes from the toilet. So is that pretty much everything for point number two? <laughs> Point number two, I see what you did there. We actually didn't plan it to be number two on the list. It just ended up that way. Speaking of number two, if you are tent camping or doing any sort of excursion where you're not self-contained, bury your poop. 
don't leave it sitting out somewhere. And that, that rule of like 100 feet, that's actually where that rule comes from. Like you are not supposed to poop on the ground or bury your poop if you're tent camping within 100 feet of a water source. I just apply that rule of thumb to dumping the gray tanks as well. And like we mentioned before, people are actually doing this, which is why boondocking sites are getting shut down. It's completely gross and disgusting. So tent campers, come on, do better. Hand sanitizer. Yep. We gotta get some more of this. We lied, we had one more stop. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome. What's going on? What does it say? Oh, okay. I thought that was going to say closed. It says Easter service. You got me all nervous. I was nervous. Oh my <laughs> word. In my defense, white sign, red, looked like flapping in front. No, they just want you to come to their Easter service. As we're driving in here, let's go over rule number three of boondocking etiquette, or as we say, don't be an idiot, is when you see other campers in the boondocking area, try not to park directly next to them, especially if there is a wide enough area, which usually in the West there is. If you're in the forest, they're generally designated area within the forest. So just be polite of your neighbor and give them some space. And if there isn't any room, go up and talk to them. Like just ask permission. That's what we did back at Lake Holloman. Yep. It was so crowded and we wanted to like squeeze in somewhere. Well, it was like we were, the only spot. Yeah, well we were wanting to stay next to our friends Craig and Victoria and there was somebody pretty close to them already, but yep. they were outside. So we just went up and they were like, and we asked, hey, these are our yep. friends. Do you mind if we squeeze in next to you? And they're like, oh yeah, not totally a problem. fine with it. And they left the next morning. Probably because they didn't want to stay next to us. No, no, I don't think that was it. <laughs> I would say you can back up straight, but to the right a little bit. Okay, and you're going to keep me from going off the cliff back there? Yes, I will save you from going off the cliff. You can go faster. You're not going to fall off. How are we on level? Woohoo! Perfecto. Nicely done. Which means all I have to do is get the wheel chocks in, but first I gotta get a coat on, cause it's cold out there. Better? You need to be rolling the kit. Yes, I feel better. You need to be rolling when you go inside. Why? What happened in there? Just, just, just be, What happened? Just be rolling when you go in. Oh no. All right, I'm really nervous about this right now. Okay, so my desk whoa <gasps> is that cody's food it's, it's food okay well, did you look at your desk yeah i know <laughs> and there's a chunk of dog food i think this came out of like a paper hole punch that i still had I'm so nervous about this nothing's falling yep top came off. yep you called it well we gotta clean that cabinet out now it must not have been sealed on tight or something. <laughs> I just think it was doing this <laughs> and eventually popped it right off. Oh my word. Well, Cody's, the hilarious Cody's thing is, gonna have a feast. There's not, there's not a lot of food up here. Like all the really, food. Really, it just all came down? Most of the food that, yeah, that came out, came down. Oh my word. <laughs> the roads were a little uh, heavy. The sun is trying to come out. It's trying. All right. Fourth, are we on number four? We are at number four. Fourth boondocking tip. Not tip. Don't be an idiot. That's what it is. Fourth way to not be an idiot when you go boondocking. I don't know, that might seem really loud. Uh, don't create new spots, especially if you're on any sort of like public land or out there. Look for the spots that exist. Like we're right here in this nice turnaround spot. There are plenty of spots though that we could have just like pulled into the grass and made our own spot. But if too many people start doing that, that's what, actually one of the reasons the land in Sedona that we know of got shut down is because people were just spreading out all over the place, creating new spaces. So find spots that already exist and use those. Don't be an idiot. All right, so we've got to finish setting up and then we have five more don't be an idiot tips for you. Actually, I feel like they're more than tips. 
they're not even just guidelines. They're rules, hard set rules that you need to follow. You heard it here first. If they're not hard set rules, we're making them rules. Yes. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, let's talk about one of the noisiest ways you can be an idiot, and that is running your generator 24 seven. Now, I am not anti-generator. In fact, look at this, I've got one. I'm about to hook it up because our batteries are running a little lower than I'd like, and I'd like to charge them back up. But there's a right way to use a generator, and there's a wrong way to use a generator. You have to remember when people are boondocking, one of the primary reasons that people do it is they want the peace and quiet that they're not afforded in some campgrounds when they have 50 neighbors surrounding them. Here, out in the middle of nowhere, you can literally just hear silence. Until your neighbor fires up a generator and then one next door fires up a generator as well. So just consider a few things before you boondock uh, with your generator. First, if you have the ability, buy a quiet generator. The quieter the generator, the less obtrusive the noise is gonna be. Second, don't run your generator after 10 o'clock at night and don't fire it back up at the crack of dawn. Your neighbors might be sleeping, they might be just enjoying the outdoors. So it does seem kind of rude if you're running it late into the night and uh, waking them up with you pulling the cord on the generator yet again. And lastly, see if there is some sort of way that you can mitigate the noise directly to your neighbors. So point it at yourself. Sometimes I will park the truck between the generator and the neighbors. In our particular case, we're still literally the only ones here. So I can fire it up and I'm not bothering a soul, which is nice. And I'm only gonna run it for probably about one to two hours, just enough to get our battery up about 10, 20 more percent. Then the sun should take care of the rest today and we'll be good to go. I picked up this generator from Harbor Freight. When it comes to generators, I would say it's moderately quiet. It's definitely not as loud as a construction generator, but not as quiet as the Honda generators that you see out there that are also like twice or three times as expensive. But the only downfall to this one for some people might be, I can't run the air conditioning off it, but that's not a problem for us. We don't run our air conditioner much at all anyways, but it gets the job done as far as charging my batteries. I've got 902, 892 watts coming in, and I've got 65 amps going into my batteries. So within, let's see, 65 amps, one hour would get me up 20%, then the sun should take care of the rest for the day. Sir, you're being too loud out here. You're disturbing the peace. <laughs> better it's much better <laughs> now I can tell you all about this beautiful boondocking spot that is now very quiet we found this spot on Campendium it's called foot bridge disperse and I would say any size rig can make it down here there's even sites up here over the bluff that if you point your back window at which I wish we had known this you can see snow topped mountains, which is really cool, but it is nice to have this whole space to ourselves. I just would not, if the road starts curving and going down, mm -mm, you're gonna get in big trouble because down by the river, only like tent campers in a van, there's like two different spots, would fit there and you would have a very tough time turning around. When it comes to cell service, there's a few different options here. So Verizon, we had two bars, which would work great, but we don't have a lot of hotspot on our phone when we turn our phone into a hotspot. So that's kind of the last resort for us. T-Mobile home internet, we're not exactly sure if it works or not because I think it's malfunctioning for some reason. So we've got to figure that out. And since we had already paid for the next month of Starlink, we decided to just go ahead and set it up and speeds have been pretty good. This beautiful place is BLM land. So you can stay here for 14 days. And according to iOverlander, there is water just down the road. However, the nearest dump station that is open for public use that we have been able to find is over an hour away. So if you are gonna stay here for the full, full 14 days, I'll try to get that out of my mouth. You're just gonna have to take that into consideration. This spot is also about 40 minutes away from the Monument Valley area. So that's where we're gonna head today and explore. And it's also the place where the infamous Forrest Gump scene happened. I had run for three years. 
two months, 14 days, and 16 hours. Hey, Trent, you want to come with us? You want to come with us? You want to go on a little road trip? I don't know if she wants to leave I the cushy she... couch. <laughs> this girl spends all, and I'm talking about Trinity, not Caitlin, <laughs> spends all her time oh, now she wants on rooms. the couch. It's either couch, explore, or couch. Maybe food and water breaks, but she'll take a water break and come back to the couch. She, she doesn't even want to go to her bed anymore that nope. we have. Like we, you remember when we bought this bed specific for her and she would not climb out of it. And now she's like, nope, I'm allowed on the couch. I want the couch. She owns the RV and she knows it. So are we going to be gone to where we need to make PB and J sandwiches? I think so, because <laughs> it's 9.23, it's gonna be 40 minutes there, 40 minutes back, that's two hours. We're gonna be hungry, We're gonna... unless we find something on, so on the side of the road, but, I mean, that makes sense. With the sound amount funny. of money we spent last month in food, we should probably make the peanut butter yeah, jelly sandwiches. Yeah, so here's what happened. I think if you go look at our spending summary for March on Instagram. It wasn't pretty. No, because <laughs> like, we were done gate guarding, and we were like, restaurants! We have access to restaurants! Well, restaurant, we only went to like one, like seven times. Well, no, down at Big Bend. Oh, that's true. We, we went, went to a few too. different ones, and then Alamogordo, we ate at the brown bag three times. Back, we're toning it down. Back to peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Whoa, we are we are definitely in the zone of excess jelly now. The sixth rule of not being an idiot is to not walk through people's campsites. And you would think, well, duh, like that's, you just don't do that. But people do. In fact, at Lake Holloman back in New Mexico, I literally, like they parked right next to us and then I saw her head like bobbing around behind the back window of our RV and going like right through Craig and Victoria's and ours, our RVs. Remove yourself from my personal space. It is like, I, I don't, I don't understand. There was no need. So I just realized something. Do you know what I just realized? I never took the motorcycle off the front of the truck. <laughs> Normally, Should we do that? Uh, we're going to be getting back here before dark, so okay. it doesn't matter. I think we found it. And so did... Everybody else. Yeah, 10 other people. We're such Which isn't a lot, but... It's not. I guess maybe, yeah, maybe go on this Park side. Park on this side? Yeah. Such a tourist. I am. Oh, you're ready to go? I think I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. We know there's a fee for Monument Valley, but we don't know whether it's $8. It said it could be up to $20. I think it's going to be $17. I think it's going to be $8 a person. Person. I think it maxes out at 20 per vehicle. But wait, eight plus eight is 16. And when I was online, there was a dollar convenience fee. So maybe uh, we don't pay the convenience fee if we're doing it yeah. here. But we'll we're see. just hoping that, that they, they take, take credit, credit cards. Card. <laughs> waiting, waiting. Park hours, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Drive carefully on Scenic Drive. I'm reading a sign. Credit card only, hey, we're good. Yay. We are up next in Miss Trinity. I do not want any growling or barking at this attendant. We are gonna be super sweet and nice. She's already in I know. Two. Thank, thank you so much. Good job, Trin. No, she was on her best behavior. 15 miles an hour, dirt road. This will be fun. It will be fun. See what we see. I never understood that phrase, actually, now that I said it. Which one is that? See what we see. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of obvious. You're, you're not going to see what you don't see. Yeah. And this right here, and I apologize that the view is distracted by... The motorcycle that I forgot yeah. to take off? Yes, exactly. But this is like what you think of when you think of Monument Valley. You think of those three structures. Well, while we are enjoying this nice dirt road at a leisurely five miles an hour, that brings us to reason number reason, way number seven, not to be an idiot when boondocking. And that is don't dust people out. 
most boondocking spots that we've been to are on dirt roads and Honestly, this is probably one of the things that frustrates me the most is when I'm on a dirt road, I'm parked there and somebody flies by in a side-by-side -side or in a truck or in a Jeep at like 50 miles an hour down the dirt road and completely dusts out the RV, which is especially frustrating if you have windows open and stuff like that. It's really not that hard when you're on a forest road to slow down when you see you know, tents or RVs and like just be polite and not dust people out. The other thing too that frustrates me with this is if I'm running along the road and people don't slow down and then I literally have to like jump off the side, you know, like go like this because the dust is just blowing in my face. So it's just, I mean, every single thing that we've mentioned is really just a matter of respecting other people. And this is just another example of that. All right, let's have the final mileage total. We didn't do any of the three spurs. I was gonna say there were three spurs. They say it's 17 miles yeah. total, which means those spurs have to be combined about two and a half miles long to which make they it didn't 17. Look that long. No, so 11.5 miles. Okay, so that's it. if you skip the spurs, 11 and a half miles took us one and a half hours. I just have to say, and like, okay, let's first say beautiful. 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 Beautiful structures. <laughs> you know there's like a big, <laughs> big, a big butt, butt coming. coming. Please, hold that thing back. The road, I'm. we were ready to be done with it. So rough. And I have questions about like where our $8 per person is going. <laughs> uh, no, honestly. I actually still think it's worth it to be able to get the shots of Monument Valley just because even if you don't even do the drive, it's just, it's so iconic that you obviously want your own photograph of it or video. Anyway, those are our thoughts of, honest thoughts of Monument Valley. Let us know in the comments if you've been here or if this is on your bucket list. I hope we haven't taken it off your list because that's we don't want to like discourage people from visiting places. We just want to share our honest thoughts about it. Here you go. Here you go. Hey, we got cows. Good morning, girls. I have a feeling we're gonna need gloves for this one. Me need gloves. Well, at least I want to wear them. <laughs> so this is number eight of don't be an idiot. And that is leave no trace. Don't leave human waste. Don't leave dog waste. Don't leave litter everywhere. So we're gonna take this, see how full we can fill it. I saw some trash up on the bluffs yesterday <sighs> because you wanna leave things better than when you came here and found it. This is probably the most important of all of everything we've said. The most important, don't be an idiot. <laughs> so the dog is... <laughs> She's, <laughs> she is upset. She's scraping at the door. This is probably the number one reason campsites are getting shut down when the agencies that are in charge of maintaining the area come through and there's trash and human waste. <sighs> Do you blame them? I don't. Well, remember that one place in New Hampshire? You had two yeah. full, like kitchen side gar kitchen size garbage bags. And there is not much boondocking in the Northeast. Like there is just some. Oh, that's a leaf. <laughs> that's that's nature. As we were saying, there's not much boondocking in the Northeast, and so it was so disheartening when we were on a road that allows dispersed camping just to see trash everywhere. So please, 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 what is it, Kaylin? Leave no trace. Don't be an idiot. Oh, I, I came up with the wrong phrase, sorry. Trinity, what did you do? How did you get out? Look at her happy as a clam. Trinity, oh my word, girl. Well, now we know that we need to shut the actual door. Yep. <laughs> she is so proud of herself right now. The thing is, I'm just, I haven't seen dogs, but she's not spayed yet, so it just makes me nervous. Oh, did you find some? There's another one, too. Oh, yeah, right at my feet. The water bottle down here. I'm thinking it is the perfect night for a campfire. That sounds really, really It is nice. like 63, 64 degrees. There's no wind. There was a fire ring here. I've got to uh, 
More trash? Yep. Oh, nope, it's a rock. <laughs> it's a rock. I just got to reassemble the fire ring That's a, a rock little bit. Too. And, uh, yeah, let's and we have some more fixings. Ooh. Hey, Trin. Come on, girl. Wow. I'm a little speechless. Trinity, we have to have a talk. Oh, my word. Literally through the screen. Get up in there. <laughs> yeah, that's going to do a lot of good. There's another RV project in our future. <laughs> Looking good. This one's mine. I believe we promised them nine ways to not be an idiot. Well, what's number nine? Number nine? It's right here. I can't tell you the number of fires that we have encountered. We come to a spot and the fire is still smoldering from the day before, the night before, whatever. Or has flames. Or has flames. People, don't be an idiot. Put out your fires. It's super simple. And it, it's having toured the country and seeing the result of forest fires. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some get caused naturally by lightning, stuff like that. Nothing you can do but so many get started by campfires being left unattended, people just being not smart with fires. Mm -hmm. Put your yeah. fires out. Yeah, we've had a lot of, we haven't had to evacuate anywhere yet, but there's been a lot of mm -hmm. like smoke and haze and especially in the West. Again, it's not that hard. Just six gallon water jug, dump it over it, throw sand over it, anything like that. Really quite simple. I want y'all to know we're having fun with this. Yes, we're just being a little sassy in this one. <laughs> we are. We are not going to come running out of our RV if you drive by at 40 miles an hour and dust us out. We're just trying to have fun, but at the same time, we are trying to be a message for protecting mm -hmm. these public lands that are out here. Yeah, like we, we want them to stay open. And we want to be able to enjoy them, and we want you to be able to enjoy them as well. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button next week. I'm sure we won't be quite this sassy. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.